Understand the signs will make it safer, you see. The large armor of days work without lost time in your peace. You learn that you must understand and respect all the signs. For us and you, your safety too, you must read these signs. Look at all the signs, signs, look at all the signs. Warning of the hands of present sometimes. Labels and packets, you must understand these signs. Safety begins with knowledge. In order to protect yourself from injury at the workplace, you must first learn how to recognize the possible hazards you may encounter. This is especially true when working with hazardous chemicals that pose serious health risks or have the potential for personal injury. It is important to recognize these potential hazards and understand what safety precautions you can take to minimize your exposure to those risks. The signs, container labels, placards, and material safety data sheets found throughout the workplace are part of a hazard communication system designed to provide you with important information on potentially hazardous chemicals. In this program, you will learn how to use hazard communication to recognize the potential hazards associated with the chemicals you work with. You will be instructed on the types of hazards chemicals may possess, how to use container labels and material safety data sheets to understand a chemical's potential hazards, and information you should know when handling these hazardous chemicals. To protect yourself from injury when using hazardous chemicals, you should understand a chemical's potential risks. Hazardous chemicals may produce adverse health effects upon exposure, either through contact with your skin or eyes, inhalation into your lungs, or ingestion into your digestive tract. Your employer will provide engineering controls, such as exhaust ventilation and process enclosures, to reduce your exposure to potentially hazardous materials. As well, you will be provided with the necessary personal protective equipment needed to further limit your exposure, such as safety goggles, respirators, or gloves. It is your responsibility to understand the potential hazards of the chemicals you work with and to take any additional steps needed to limit your exposure. A toxic chemical attacks your internal organs, causing extreme illness or even death. Contact with toxic chemicals should be avoided completely by using the appropriate personal protective equipment. A corrosive chemical will destroy living tissue upon contact, resulting in chemical burns and scarring. Avoid skin and eye contact with corrosive chemicals by using gloves and safety goggles. An irritant will react chemically with human tissue causing localized inflammation. Unlike corrosives, the effects of irritants are temporary and the inflammation is reversible. Hazardous chemicals may also have the potential to inflict physical harm through fire or explosion. Combustible chemicals have a risk of catching fire when exposed to an ignition source, such as open flames or sparks. Flammable chemicals have an even higher risk of catching fire when exposed to an ignition source and are extremely dangerous. These types of chemicals must be kept away from sources of heat, flame, or sparks. An explosive chemical will explode if handled improperly. Explosive chemicals should always be handled with extra care and should not be subjected to extreme pressure, high temperature, or sudden shock. An oxidizer will cause other chemicals mixed with it to burn more easily. Oxidizers strengthen fires and must be kept away from flammable or combustible materials at all times. A chemical which is reactive reacts violently when exposed to water. Reactive chemicals should never be exposed to or used near sources of water. Container labels provide information on a chemical's potential hazards and precautions to take when handling them. All containers of hazardous chemicals are required to have container labels detailing the chemical's name, the associated health risks and physical hazards of that chemical, and the name and address of its manufacturer. 
be sure to check the label of any chemical you work with and do not use a chemical whose label is damaged or missing. If the chemical is to be transferred to another container, make sure that container is labeled as well. The four most commonly used standards for chemical warning labels are the American National Standards Institute's warning label, the National Fire Protection Association's Hazard Diamond, the National Paint and Coatings Association's Hazardous Materials Information System, or HMIS, and the Department of Transportation's Hazardous Materials Placard. Each of these types of labels provide similar information but are used in different applications. The ANSI label is primarily used for common chemicals. These labels contain a warning consisting of a signal word, a symbol representing a key hazard, and precautions to follow while using the chemical. The NFPA hazard diamond is used to give emergency response personnel the information needed to safely respond to a fire or spill. This label uses a multicolored diamond divided into four sections. The top three sections represent particular hazards, flammability in red, instability in yellow, and the overall health hazard in blue. The severity of each hazard is given a rating on a scale of 0 to 4, with 4 being extremely hazardous. The white section is used to display any unique hazards, such as the chemical being reactive with water. The HMIS is the most popular standard for chemical labels. It is a five-part rectangle with three color-coded sections, each representing a particular type of hazard. Orange for the physical hazard, red for the flammability hazard, and blue for the overall health hazard. The severity of each hazard is rated on a scale of 0 to 4, with 4 being the most hazardous. An asterisk in the health section denotes a chronic health risk, which may become evident over repeated exposures. The white section is used to list the personal protective equipment to use while handling the chemical, designated by an alphabetic code. Older versions of the HMIS label will provide a reactivity section in place of a physical hazard section, and the chronic health hazard box may be missing. The Department of Transportation, or DOT, hazard labels are used primarily in the transportation of hazardous materials. The DOT hazard labels are color-coded diamonds consisting of a word and symbol describing a chemical's major hazard. Often it is necessary to get a more detailed and thorough understanding of a hazardous chemical and its potential health risks and physical hazards. The Material Safety Data Sheet, or MSDS, is a hazardous chemicals handbook containing all of the information needed to safely handle a hazardous chemical. An MSDS must be available for every hazardous chemical you may be exposed to at your workplace. Material Safety Data Sheets may come in a variety of forms, but they all must contain information on at least the following. The identity of the substance, physical and chemical characteristics, physical and health hazards, the permissible exposure limits, the possible carcinogen hazard, precautions for safe handling and procedures for cleanup in case of spills, control measures to limit exposure, and emergency and first aid procedures. You should reference the MSDS for any hazardous chemical you work with and understand the information it contains. Hazard communication involves the use of container labels and material safety data sheets to provide you with information on a chemical's potential hazards. Before using any chemical, use these sources of information to understand that chemical's health hazards, safety precautions to take while handling it, and procedures to follow in case of an accident. First, understand a chemical's potential hazards. This information is readily and easily available from the container labels on the chemicals themselves. The Hazards Identification section of the MSDS will list more detailed information on these hazards, including the symptoms to watch out for if you or your coworkers have been exposed to the hazardous chemical. Second, find out how to keep your exposure to the hazardous chemical to a minimum. The Exposure Controls and Personal Protection section of the MSDS will list the personal protective equipment needed to safely handle the chemical. This information can also be found on certain chemical warning labels. Third, 
determine what first aid steps are necessary in the event you are exposed to the chemical. The first aid measures section of the MSDS will list the first aid procedure to follow in the event of exposure with the chemical. Fourth, know how susceptible the chemical is to fire and how to extinguish a fire involving the chemical. The firefighting measures section of the MSDS will explain what procedure to follow when fighting a fire involving a hazardous chemical and what extinguishing media should be used. This section also provides information on the chemical's flammability, such as flashpoint and explosive limits. The flashpoint is the lowest temperature at which a chemical can form an ignitable mixture. The lower the flashpoint, the easier it is for the chemical to catch fire. Explosive limits are concentrations of a chemical vapor in the air. Concentrations within the explosive limits can ignite easily and are dangerous. Above the upper explosive limit, the mixture is too low in oxygen to ignite. And below the lower explosive limit, the mixture is too rich in oxygen to ignite. Both the NFPA Hazard Diamond and the HMIS have a flammability section to gauge how easily the chemical can be ignited. Fifth, know how to detect a release of the chemical and what procedures need to be followed to clean up spills. The physical and chemical properties section of the MSDS will list a chemical's physical characteristics, such as color and odor. This information can be used to help you detect spills and releases of a hazardous chemical. The accidental release measures section of the MSDS will describe how to safely clean up a spill. Hazard communication gives you the information needed to handle potentially hazardous chemicals safely. It is important to understand how to interpret container labels and the information provided on material safety data sheets for the chemicals you work with. Before using any hazardous chemical, you should use these resources to understand important information about these chemicals, such as the health effects and physical hazards associated with handling chemicals personal protective equipment to use while handling a chemical, symptoms of exposure to hazardous chemicals, and first aid procedures to follow in the event of exposure. How easily a chemical can start a fire and the firefighting measures to use in case of fire, and how to detect spills and releases of chemicals and the proper cleanup procedures to use. By understanding the potential hazards associated with the chemicals you work with, and taking the appropriate precautions to reduce your exposure to those risks, you will be creating a safe and healthy environment for you and your co-workers. Look at all the signs, signs, look at all the signs, warning of the hazards present sometimes, labels and placards, you must understand these signs.